another song and I'll do it with them. All right, for this next tone demo, you're going to see this little box with the dark switch on. This box is an AN Enterprises Smooth and Slim clone that I built. Um, the, the, basically, this was bypassed during the first demo, so it's just a, basically a wire and then the ground going all the way across. Uh, putting it to the dark setting is what I've determined John Merritt does with his Steel String Singer number two. So when he was on tour, there's a little silver box on top of his amp, and lo and behold, it was a smooth and slim. So for this next part of the demo, it's going to be, and for, basically for the remaining of the demos that you see jams and whatnot, um, this box is gonna be on, and the uh, pay attention to the switch it may go up and down a few times, but it's going to be mainly on the dark setting, which is a 33K resistor with a capacitor. I'll get into this box very specifically in another video and do an analysis of the frequencies that's, that this thing's manipulating. So... <laughs> So for my recording setup, I have, I forgot to even mention this, um, we're going through G1265, slushy and G1265s, through a 1960s, late 1960s Pine um, Fender Bandmaster cab, so the cab is huge. Um, I have this Shure SM58, so I admit, this is not the best sort of recording setup, I'm saving my pennies, and your donations are helping me get there um, for a Boss Wowza Waza Craft tube amp expander. Looking forward to um, buying one of them one day. It's that way mic placement is not going to be a factor, and we can get a eliminate that as a variable. But it was about a foot away from the the corner of the dust cap, pointing directly at the speaker, uh, and it's going through this 20 dB pad and into this Rode iXLR recording interface to an iPhone 7. Uh, I'm not sure if there's some processing going on with the, with the phone, but it sounds like a, some of the reverb is lost. So what I am doing is I'm mixing in my Pixel 3 XL stereo camera, um, video camera. That mic 
those mics with with this to try to give a little bit more of a room ambience vibe and i think it's it the effect is pretty good i think that my pixel 4 or my pixel 3 camera uh audio sounds better than this mic this one's very honest and brutal which is why i'm going to keep it for the tone demos but you know it's picking up it's very unforgiving it's picking up every sort of nuance in the speaker so i'm not quite happy with this setup but it's the best that i have for now um and i'm learning as i go so this is what we got all right so here's the pedal board that's going to be in play um it, it completely you know buffered if you will or bypassed um during the first part of the video but during the jams you're gonna this board is going to be in play and what we have going on here is the first stop of the signal goes into the wah. So this is a custom audio electronics wah. Uh, TU3 tuner for the input buffer, okay? Because this is bypass. There's the first buffer in the chain. Uh, that goes into this. I don't think we use this um, micro synth during the demo as much. But after the micro synth goes into my Jan Ray, Vemurum Jan Ray clone. Um, this is an amazing pedal. It does a lot of Steve Ray Vaughan tones to, to a T, in my opinion. Uh, so Josh puts these on. Um, and then the Keely Katana. This is a Klon, uh, Silver Klon, TS-10. And here's all the settings. I don't think I've manipulated it. Uh, actually, the TS-10 goes into the Qtron here. And that Qtron then reroutes back into the TS-10. Uh, occasionally, you'll see Josh click on um, between these three overdrives, pretty much. Once in a while, he'll, he'll hit the chorus just for fun. Um, oh, actually, you know what? It, the signal routes from the Qtron into the OC-3. I don't think he uses as much the OC-3. And then routes back down to the TS-10. So this is kind of like the Dead & Company thing going on here. Um, after that, it goes through, where does it go? To the mod MD500. And after the MD500, it goes up into the, so this Aquapus here, this is my modded, um, Aquapus. Actually, this is a circuit from such a hard man. It's a PCB that's meant to be a one for one, uh, circuit wise of the original, um, Aquapus. So it uses the MN3005 uh, delay chip, just like John Mayer's real rig. So this is, this is kind of cool. Um, in addition, the authentic, or the authenticity of, of this demo, hoping to. Uh, after that, it goes into one of my new favorite pedals, which is this uh, T-Rex engineering replica delay. It's a really great pedal. And then... At the end, I don't think he uses it at all, but the RV500. So this is my main board for me. All the pit power is supplied by individually this, uh, what is it, Voodoo Labs Mondo. So it powers the whole thing without any need for extra, anything extra. No, So it's just one power supply. Uh, when we're splitting the two amps together, when all the amps are played together, uh, basically the John Mayer and these two amps, it's going to be split by this Leo P split. And this, this little box is awesome. And John Mayer uses this one as well during the Search for Everything tour. I picked it up after hearing a bunch of uh, noise from ground loops when I was connecting two amps. So I got this that solved that problem. So let's just get further on into some jams. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, 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 oh,